How's it going everybody? Welcome to K6 Outdoors. My name is Kyle. Today I wanted to bring to you guys a new to 2022 electric heater from the folks at King Electric. This is a 24 inch infrared carbon fiber heater. Uh, why does that sound different? It's that carbon IQ technology is what they say they're using. Um, essentially they've changed the traditional infrared heater, but they're trying to make it easier for people to install, easier to use, last longer and really produce better heat. And uh, this is new to them this year, and they asked me to do this video for them to give them my feedback on what do I think of the heater, and you know maybe some applications you could use it in, and just give someone a, a guy's honest feedback, because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing to you guys, and ultimately I don't want any of you to pick up something I wouldn't personally use myself, because I've said it a few times, I would like to learn some of this stuff the hard way so you guys don't have to. This is not a cheap investment per se, but you know, if you're willing to spend a little extra money to support a US company, this unit is a little atypical. It does come with a remote. Again, it does plug in and it only requires a 15 amp circuit. This is a 120 volt system and it does not require you to be a master electrician to install it. It does come with a plug and all that fun stuff, which we will dig into here in a minute. If you guys like what I do here on K6 Outdoors, I do a lot of outdoor stuff. I do some product reviews on relative things that, you know, would affect your outdoor thing. You know, in this instance, a radiant heater you could use outside on your deck or in your garage. Anything that involves outdoors, really outdoor projects, I tend to, to uh, bring you guys along on the trips. So if you guys like it, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. And if you hit that bell next to the subscribe button and make it turn gray, you will get notifications when I post more videos like this or other outdoor family fun stuff in the future. Let's go ahead and dig into it and see what we got inside. So here it is, it's a pretty sweet looking unit. Very, very sleek by design. And one of the first things you're gonna notice, I can get you in here a little bit closer. You can see down inside there, that new carbon IQ heating element. That's what the folks there at King Electric are calling that, that, uh, that heat tube inside of there. Again, what's the main difference is they're using carbon fiber as one of the main elements to create that um, heating coil per se inside of that. One of the big things with this heater, it creates instant directional heat. It's great for you know use outside in a patio, uh, maybe in your gazebo, outside your, you know, on your deck, uh, maybe at your tailgate. Um, and why this one is nice, we'll cover in a minute, it's, it's 120 volts. Um, there's all sorts of different uses, whether you're gonna use it at your recreational facility, you know, commercial applications such as an outdoor restaurant, um, any, any of that type of stuff. Um, I've got some intentions in the next year to be doing an outdoor kitchen here at the house on the deck. And I'd like to mount one of these up in there so, you know, we have a little bit of heat when it gets cool out in the fall this time of year. But for today, and what we're going to do, we're going to mount this in here in the garage. Uh, again, you can see up here, I mean, we've talked about it before, the, the King Electric um, Eco 2S Plus model I have, one of their bigger um, area heaters. Uh, I have had a good luck with it. We're not going to cover it too much in this video, but I will put a, a link up in the corner for you guys to check that video if you would like. It's my primary source heat, heat here in the garage and it works phenomenal. Um, it's just going to be, there's many ways you can mount this and we're going to show you that today. Uh, there's some screws here in the back for the, using um, the actual mounts that come with it and you can also hang it by chains if you so choose from the ceiling. There's just a few installation requirements you need to pay attention to. I think where this kind of becomes beneficial for me is if I don't want to heat the entire garage up and I just want to sit here in front of the, you know, the table, relax and do something, I don't have to heat the whole garage up, waste money. This can be used for more point control heat. Um, this is a 1500 watt unit, again, 120 volts. And this specific one is a plug. Uh, if I pull the rubber bands off here, I can show you the actual plug, again, for the 120 volt system here. You can get this in a direct wire. Um, again, the, you can get bigger ones and I'll, I'll put some photos on the screen here so you can kind of see the different setups. Um, but you can check out King Electric's website. I'll put Amazon affiliate links below and some other links to where you can pick these up. Uh, they are very, um, I guess, widely available depending upon the size of model and your wiring choices, whether you're doing direct uh, wiring to your um, 220 or if you're using 120 volts like this plug-in unit with a nice uh, long cord. So let's take a look at this in a little more detail and, and see some of the requirements for the installation of this thing. This unit is all weather rated, suitable for all locations, all weather locations. But it even says again here in the instructions, it's rated for indoor or well-protected outdoor areas. And remember for using it outdoors, make sure you're using the correct 
uh, type of plugin, whether it be GFCI protected, uh, make sure it's compliant with your local code in your area, just to make sure you're safe. You don't want to get electrocuted, okay? It's not fun. Well, I don't know that, but I can just imagine it's not fun. That's all I can say. It is made out of aircraft grade aluminum and stainless steel. So it is, you know, it's a nice little um, high quality built unit and you shouldn't have to worry about any cheap components or any of that fun jazz. One thing I should also mention is this durable carbon IQ heating element in the front here is uh, rated for about 10,000 hours. So you're gonna get quite a bit of use out of this heater before you have any problems. Um, and you know, deal with it at that point, 10,000 hours is a lot of time this being on and um, you know, it's a long time, that's what I'm trying to say. And like we mentioned, this is a 1500 watt unit. It requires 12.5 amps to run it, so you're gonna need at least a 15 amp circuit. I've got a dedicated uh, 20 amp service over here that I'll be plugging into, so it will not be a problem. Um, and this is kind of designed to heat a five foot by five foot um, area, I guess I should say, if you can be in that five foot by five foot area you're going to get that radiant heat that's going to help warm you. Again, this is a, uh, an object warming device and not necessarily, a, 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 you know, the air. It's meant to warm up items, not just the, the stuff we breathe in. So in the bag that came with it, you saw me pull that out, comes with the activation card for the warranty. Um, go online to, uh, you go online to www.king-electric.com backslash warranty and register your heater. And then the uh, installation and maintenance manual. I think uh, where we need to pay a little bit more close attention to is, again, on the previous videos you've seen, uh, you don't have to have any specific wiring experience to do this. This specific one, because this is a plug model, um, the ones bigger than this do require um, some wiring. So um, this one's flexible and it can be taken anywhere with you. Um, you know, you just gotta make sure you adhere to some of the installation requirements so you're not burning things up or burning yourself. And this is the last piece of the puzzle, which kind of makes this heater even a little bit more unique, is it comes with the remote. You know, you can set a timer, turn your temperatures up and down, on and off. And a lot of these other ones like this, if they do exist, probably have an on-off switch or a, a knob, you know, but not as user-friendly. You can mount this one up on the ceiling and you don't gotta climb up a ladder just to get to it. Like I said before, there's many options. It comes with, comes with the brackets for the wall, which I'm gonna mount this on. Um, let me open the bag up, I can show you here in a little bit more detail. But inside this bag, you're gonna find some nice high quality mounts um, for mounting these to the wall, you know, using that. And then you have the mounts to mount it to the actual heater. On the back side, you can hear them kind of floating around. They've got a couple of anchor points here for connecting it to those, to this anchor here. You're gonna use this and you know, put some nuts and stuff on that to anchor that in place. Um, or if you choose not to anchor it to the wall like that, um, it also comes with some little eyelets that you can screw into it and you can hang by chains from the ceiling, which is, is a really unique, you know, option because it just adds to the flexibility. Again, you can see there, you could hang it by chains from the ceiling, um, which is part of the reason why I use this, you know, OSB board. Um, some of those old folks, I used to work at a local box chain store named Menards and the old timers would come in there looking for that SOB board. Well, <laughs> sorry guys, it's, it's OSB as much as I'd like it to be that type of lumber and to, to have that funny meaning, it's just not what it is. So like another reason why I like using the OSB on the side walls here, just to give you some, health, some added flexibility where to mount this. This also comes with a nice little holder to put your remote on the wall, which, you know, is handy because I know I put stuff down where it doesn't have a home and well, it gets lost. So, and I will give them some credit. It even comes with the uh, hardware you need to put this all together. You know, a nice little 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter wrench and a uh, hex key or an Allen wrench as many as you call it. And I will say uh, uh, this is probably one of the better wrenches I've seen come with a a kit to install. I say that because usually it's like this. It's a little stamp piece of nothing that just barely even holds its own shape. This has actually got some substance to it. You know, it looks like a nice casted part. Um, 
anyway, I just want to give you guys an idea of the quality here. Just something as simple as a little wrench. It actually is a, a real wrench versus a little, yeah. That's not a real wrench. So let's go ahead and we'll start installing this on the wall here. And uh, I'll show you how quick and simple this really is. I think anybody can really handle this as long as you can run one of those fancy little, I don't even have one out here. One of these fancy little, nope, that's an impact. All my, all my drills are in the basement working on a project down there. But as long as you can run one of them fancy powered screwdrivers or even really something simple that can be hand controlled, you probably can do this yourself and install it. So if I'm looking at the instructions, this seems to be one of the more easy uh, installations that you have to do here. Basically, you got to assemble the uh, pieces onto the actual heater itself and then screw into the ceiling. Uh, make sure what you're using for fasteners works in your situation, whether you're hooking it up to brick or plywood or pl whatever, plastic, whatever. I'm going to be using some sheet metal screws I had left behind for attaching stuff to the roof. This unit only weighs about seven pounds, so you really don't have to have a ton of force to hold these on the ceiling, but you want this to be secure. So using two good screws per side is what you're going to want to do. This comes with all the, the hardware, wrenches and such to put the unit together, but you're gonna need to find some screws to attach it to the wall or ceiling in your application. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the uh, heater ready. Um, and what's nice about this unit, like I mentioned before, is the back is completely adjustable on this for your placement of the brackets. So we're gonna go ahead and get this assembled using the nylon lock washer on here kind of get things loosely fitted and pop this onto the heater to use this. What's nice about the nuts, they've incorporated basically the, the nut and the, the chain hanger all in one. If you want to hang this from a chain from the ceiling, it's easy to do that. Or you just, you know, put it on here and tighten on your bracket. Pretty simple. It really doesn't necessarily matter all that much of how you put these together. The biggest piece is you need these little bumps to lock into the, the mating bracket when you're hanging it on the ceiling. So that's what keeps the, the orientation locked. So we've got these installed on the heater. How I'm choosing to do mine, whether it's right or wrong, it's going to work the same as having the brackets face this way. With the bumps sticking out, you could do vice versa, I'm sure. I, Ultimately, as long as you've got the bumps lining up with the holes on the brackets correctly so it locks it into place, I don't think there's probably a right or wrong answer for that. Um, but hey, let me know your guys' thoughts on that. So we're going to go ahead and get up in the ceiling. I'm going to assemble these up there and uh, keep moving. So I am choosing to mount this here on the ceiling right above my tractor. I'm going to point it that way towards my workbench. Doing that for a couple of reasons. One, I don't always keep the shop 80 degrees. Like I said, I keep it above freezing all winter long. And this way, you know, I can come out here, do some work in this little area and stay warm, but I don't even have to turn the big heater up. So kind of looking forward to that. Plus there's a power supply right there, or I could pop up right through here. And I've got to plug in in the attic. And just make sure wherever you're mounting this, it's nice and sturdy. It needs to be able to support that weight of the heater albeit not much, you still need to be stable to support that. Nice and sturdy. Those are not going anywhere. Up we go. go put it in its home. Okay, look at this again. We want this, the bumps on the uh, bracket themselves. And again, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to have all these pointing the same direction. But if you look at these here, I'm going to lose these. These are just a little bit loose. Again, well, I kind of like that versus the nut. I think they're both fine. And then we're going to set this up in there. You know, leave those loose so we can span the distance that we moved the brackets apart.
and it's doing bracket things. So now we just kind of snug these up using the, the actual decent accessories, you know, with a nice wrench and an Allen wrench comes with it. So we kind of got that to where we want it to be. I'm gonna loosen these up just a skosh. And we're gonna rotate it to point towards my workbench. see all the different adjustments you got there from the bumps. Same there on this side, now we got it where we want it. We can tighten it the rest of the way. And the heater is mounted on the ceiling. Let's take a look at it from the ground. So what's nice about this, like I said, is I could be over here working. You know, I've got the main heater up here, but if I wanted to have some direct heat here where we're sitting here having a full few cold snacks, if we haven't preheated the garage, we got that option. Really like that, that is pretty dang slick. And now we're just gonna run that cable over there. Now we're gonna deal with the old cord. Uh, again, this is the 120 volt version. And we're gonna use the zip ties to keep it up out of the way. Go ahead and plug it in here. Gonna hold it up there, and I'm gonna put an actual electrical staple in, just to kinda, you know, church it up a little bit. We're gonna put an electrical staple in right here, just to keep the cable out of the way. Because, why not? Can't you find my good hammer? So we're gonna use the one from Harbor Freight, the Pittsburgh brand, it's garbage, but it's better than nothing, it's cheap. I'm gonna just tack this up here quick. I'm not gonna make this tight. Give it a little bit of something to. I'll pull it up, not tight. Just there to help and do a little support thing, do support things and keep the cable out of the way. There's many ways you can hang that. I'll let you guys do your thing, but this may or may not move. This could be temporary. What's nice about it is this is you know, flexible on the cordage, cordage situation here. And uh, let's see how it works. Let's turn it on. So one last gainer to see how I have this installed. You can see I've got the cable running up here. Trying to keep that nice and, you know, swoopy. I went ahead and zip tied this, you know, kind of, it's not pushing hard against it, but just to keep it in place, to keep this cable off the back, because this will get warm on the back. Um, again, it's a radiant heater. Snaked her up through there, put a, you know, a loose, uh, electrical wire staple in there over there and she's good to go you got your uh, you know your bolt your washer and your nut on this side same way here I've got her just adjusted down there so you can kind of get the bird's eye view of my that's where she's pointing if you guys would do me a solid and put some messages down there in that comment section and let me know what you guys think of the video let me know what you think of the heater uh, let me know if there's something you'd like to see do differently with this or something in general you'd like to see I would appreciate that. Um, I like conversing with you all and just makes it a little more fun. I enjoy doing this as a hobby and bringing this content to you guys. So just give me some feedback, would you? I'd appreciate it. So don't forget this does come with, you know, the, the nice remote so you can control this. However, it doesn't have batteries. So let's go inside and grab two AAA batteries and I'll be right back. So I went and grabbed a couple of AAA batteries to throw in the remote. Simple, open the back, throw them in. I don't think I need to make a construction on how to, yeah, I said construction. I don't think I need to make a construction for you to be able to put the batteries in the remote, but the plus goes to plus and the little minus button goes to minus. So get that back together, you have the remote. Up on the left side here of the unit, you get the main power switch. We'll turn that on quick. Let's see what we got for juicage. Oh, look at that. The front gives you a little readout. And again, you'll see into here the nice carbon fiber IQ coil. And let's get back down here to ground and see what we got. 
Sorry about the lights. It's a little bright over here. I should probably just turn one off so you guys can see what's going on. So there are two heat levels. Level one is what it's on now. You can see it's starting to glow to get you up there. So you can see it. I can already feel the heat. I can tell you it's already getting pretty warm. Starting to glow at level one. It's putting out quite a bit of heat. My intentions in this video were not to give you the whole spectrometer of how hot this is or what's really going on, but we'll do that in another video. This is just going to be kind of an unboxing and installation video for you guys, but I'll give you the idea now that we've got two different heat levels. You know, level two, she starts really glowing up. Man, that thing puts out some heat. <laughs> Man, it's, it's definitely warm. It's, I can see why they want you to mount it so high in the air. You're not trying to get any, you know, not trying to get burnt, okay? This is a nine foot ceiling in here. That thing is up their ways and I can feel, let me, let's, let's, go, let's go back here behind and see what we got. This thing really is putting out some pretty good heat and we'll get in the, I just kind of want to, wow. Yeah, I'm quite a ways away. Uh, I'll do some more measurements and we'll do some stuff here, but that thing is just heating away. You can see the reflection on the table here. That thing's putting out some serious heat. I'm definitely pretty impressed here to start with, but let's take one more look at a couple things. Here you also have, the, uh, again, you have the temperature control and you can do up or down. You can see you go from L1 to L2, level one, level two. You have a timer and you can set it by how many hours you want it to run up to 24 hours on a timer. Or you can just turn it back down to zero and the timer is off. You want to shut it off and that will kill the juice to it. Man, this heater is pretty impressive. It's, it's warm. Okay. So again, the levels L1 and L2 is half wattage and full wattage. So basically 600 watts versus about the 600 watt output. Sorry, I can't talk or 1200 watt output, which is what this little guy is rated for. And it puts off some serious heat. I'm telling you guys, we'll do some more testing on that here in the next video, but I kind of wanted to show you guys just kind of what we're getting ourselves into. And again, I appreciate the folks there at King Electric sending this sample out for me to give it a go and give you guys my honest opinion on it. One thing I do want to note is they say in the constructions that uh, these remotes use the same frequency. So you can power multiples of this unit with one remote. Again, you got to aim point click. And you'll be able to change some stuff, which that's kind of nice. I mean, it could be a pain in some situations, I ain't gonna lie, but I'll probably say in 99% of the situations where you've got multiple of these heaters set up, it's kind of nice just to have one remote. You don't have to run around and, you know, find one that works with it because I know I would struggle with it anyways. So while I'm getting a little bit of suntan uh, back in my neck, let's have a little regroup to see where we got to on this King Electric Smart Wave heater with Carbon IQ technology. Again, this is a, uh, I would say a sponsor video. This is something that King Electric sent me for this video, but I'm gonna give you guys my honest feedback on a few different things here. And, um, cause what do I, I have nothing to lose here. And I want you guys, if you're looking to buy things, you know, does it make sense for you? Again, this has many different installations. You could install it anywhere inside of a building. Um, obviously you gotta, to, to, you know, withstand some of the, the requirements for installation. Cause this thing puts out some, heat. I can tell you right now, this is going to be pretty sweet to have out here in the middle of winter. Um, when I don't want to just bump the entire room up, I can just pop this on and have instant heat, which that's a big plus. Um, again, you can mount this inside the building. I can see where this could be very beneficial. It's starting to be fall time here. It's a high of like, right now it's around 60 degrees outside, but if you wanted to sit outside and not get a smoky smell uh, from a fire, you have this heat, you know, mounted right above you. Again, this is needs to be installed in a well um, protected area. It is you know, rated for outdoor installation, but just protect it uh, for your own sake and for the unit's sake. Um, but I'm gonna give you uh, my thoughts on the installation, build quality, and my initial thoughts on the, on the output. I kind of gave you that already. So let's start with that. The heat output. This thing is not very big. I mean, you can kind of see there, it's actually 24 and a half inches long, six and a half by five and a quarter. Small unit weighs like 6.68 pounds according to the constructions. It puts out some pretty amazing heat. It's on level two right now and it's, I don't know, it says it's 72 in my shop right now. 
and that thing is just baking on me. We'll, we'll see what happens when I've got it 45 degrees outside here and you know, feel the heat I'm getting at. We'll do some of that testing again when I, I talk about here in the next video. But I'm gonna give it a, a 10 out of 10 for heat output for the size of this thing. It's just, it's baking me, okay? I mean, let's just, well, we're gonna, yeah, level one so I can finish this video and not sweat. So the second thing I wanna give you my opinion on is the construction of it. it it's built with good quality materials, you can tell. Um, yeah, it's light, but that's not a reflection of poor craftsmanship. It's built with good lightweight materials and it's, it's very uh, sturdy feeling. Uh, you know, the, the mesh and, and all that fun stuff on, I can, I can tell you it sure feels like something that's gonna last quite a long time, which is what I'm looking for. So for the overall construction, I give it two thumbs up. Seems very well built. Last thing I wanna touch on is the ease of installation. You guys saw, really, you only need a, two nuts, two bolts, well, four, bolt, four nuts if you choose not to use the included multi-hanger um, setup but I'm gonna go ahead and use that because it's easy to, easier to adjust stuff that way. You don't need a wrench to take it down if you don't want to. Um, but ease of installation, pretty simple. Takes a couple of minutes. And if you buy the 120 volt option, plugs right into the socket as long as you got something there. Really quick and simple. Obviously, um, the other units, they can be more hardwired. They're, you know, they're 220 circuits or 240, whatever you wanna call it. Um, that is a little more complicated but for, I think, a, just a novice DIYer who likes to do electrical work or feels comfortable doing it, that will be more sufficient. Or if you have no confidence at all, someone can plug something into a wall. Um, but again, if you don't feel comfortable in any of those situations, make sure you're reaching out to people to help you out. So overall, I'd say this thing's a super sweet heater, and I'm really thrilled that I'm able to uh, show you guys this here. Uh, there's multiple uses for this, and I, like I mentioned before in the video, there's going to be an outdoor kitchen I want to work on, and this is going to be located. I'm going to have one of these out there. I, you know, I'm just gonna tell you now. Cause I like to grill all year round and it gets really cold here in Iowa. And well, I don't want, it's just one less reason. You know, I can go out there and just, eh, that's nice. So let me know what you guys think of this video. Thanks again to King Electric for sending this to me. And I really hope you all enjoyed the video. I will put links below to find some of the various stuff here as well as links to uh, King Electric's website where you can find the various ones they have. And I'll put a link above here for the Eco 2S Plus electric heater I have on the wall. If you guys liked today's video, I would greatly appreciate you to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. If you've made it this far in the video, you may as well hit that subscribe button if you are already a subscriber in the channel. I would greatly appreciate that. I'm trying to grow the channel here and you know, reach out to more of you to, you know, like I said before, I'd like to learn some of this stuff the hard way so you don't have to. And you know, money's tight nowadays. And if you're gonna invest in something, you wanna get something that's worth your time. I've had other King Electric products in the past, um, and this one seems to be just on par with the same quality and craftsmanship you would expect from a company like them. Thanks again for stopping in. My name's Kyle. Hope you guys learned something today, and until next time, I'll see ya.